Hello and welcome back everybody to another Tableau Tip Tuesday, the series where every Tuesday we put out another tip highlighting some of Tableau's more obscure capabilities. From beginner to expert, join us every week to learn those hidden gems to take your skills to a new level. Today we're going to be going over groups versus sets, similar functionality in Tableau, and today we're going to be dissecting them to see what's different about them. So I have an easy visu visualization here, just category and subcategory and sales. And in order to make our groups, we can either select our mark or we can select our mark header. And we're going to get some slight differences between that that really all boils down to one thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. First, I will select holding control several different marks and I will go to my paperclip icon to group them together. Now you can see that it gives us a new discrete dimension and it also places that new discrete dimension onto color. Now back to what I said before about how these are static, don't um, expect it to be dynamic in any way. So for example, right here, the blue is our number one performing item per category. But if next month storage had an abysmal month and it fell lower in this, uh, in this chart, it would still be strangely highlighted blue. So for that reason, you want to group things that are static by design, such as area codes under a zip code, um, subordinates under a director or an organizational chart, maybe, um, territory analysis, uh, things of that nature. All right, the second type of group that we can use is by selecting our mark header. So back to a fresh chart here, if we select the headers here, so if we sort this descending and select labels, fasteners, and envelopes. Maybe to us these items are too small um, to analyze individually, so we want to group them together under a new header here. And you can see that it groups up those three objects into one bar right there. Now Tableau has no right back capability, so if I take subcategory and put it on detail here, you can see those segments where it is still holding those unique but we get a brand new dimension over here and it replaces the subcategory on my rows shelf with the new grouped dimension. All right, so if it gives us a new dimension, we also wanna understand how we can reuse these fields. So if we select reusing a visual static and we take this and we put it right onto our structure shelf, you can see that we have three members uh, right here, one, is the group we made that was blue, two is the group that we made that was orange, and then we get a bucket of everything else that is placed in a group called other. If we reuse the group that we used as a header and we reuse that directly on our structure shelf, you can see that all of the other group members that would otherwise be clumped into an other category are still held unique while we have our three members we grouped into one bar right here. So if we go into our group and edit our group, we can see it all boils down to this button right here. If I switch it, we will see this view turn into the one that looked like the other and vice versa, just like so. Which brings us to sets. So the first thing that I, I wanna do here is I wanna make a quick scatter plot. And we're going to be determining if any of the customers in our top 100 of sales are also in our bottom 100 of profit. So if we put customer name onto filters, we can go over to our top tab where we could say, give me my top 100 customer names. However, that's going to remove the rest of the customer names that do not match that criteria. So I opened up this dialog for a reason. Take a look at the top of our tabs here. We see general condition in top. And if we go to create a set, there we have our same general condition and top. So think of a set as a filter that does not have to remove the information. So we'll call this top 100, top 100 based on the sum of sales. And we'll go ahead and press okay. And we can see that it, down in our data pane, it gives us a brand new section called set. We'll go ahead and we'll make our second set here because one of the beauties of sets is that you can combine them into one set here. So we'll take a look at that here in a second as well. So now we want to see our bottom 100 based off of profit and we can press okay. So right away we can use these two sets. If I place it onto color, you're going to see there's my bottom 100 items by profit or customers by profit. And if we take it out, we can put in our sales one. And there is our top 100 product based off of sales. 
So the last thing that we're going to do to this visualization is we're actually going to combine those sets. Since these sets were based off of the same dimension here, we can combine them, use an inner join right here, we'll press OK. Now we only have shared members of each set, so it's only those customers that happen to fall into both sets right there. Now, if we want to know who those people are, we can use our tooltip or we can reuse that set in a new visualization right here directly on structure where we get an in and out analysis. Now we can just add our customer names so we know who is in and who is out. We'll exclude those that don't make the cut and we could even make a slick visualization here to kind of allay our point right there. Now we have a status monitoring dashboards that will always show customer names that are in our high sales, but somehow we're not turning a profit or we're turning a low profit on these particular customers. So it's getting to be a little bit of a longer video here. So I think I'll take our last object set actions here and make it into its own video. So keep your eyes peeled for that in the future. That being said, that's all we have for you today. Thank you and join us next week for another tip.